All right, here we have a standard jam scale electric toilet on a marine head. And uh, I've got some problems with it. So I'm going to be taking it apart and rebuilding the motor assembly back here and the impeller gaskets, um, the whole shebang. And so I'm going to walk us through that rebuild and how the sucker actually works. So, if we start here in the front, on my system, this forward darker line coming in is the water. In my case, it comes from the river. Uh, so, it's water directly from the system. The motor pumps it in through the impeller. The back line is the sewer line, which is the drain line. So, the chewed up material goes out there. And that white line on the top there is water that's also pumped in to put water into the bowl for the next flush. So that's the mechanics of, of it. Now, the problem I run into in mine, maybe yours, is that the back of it is super tight. How do I get to those screws when I can barely fit a screwdriver in on this left side? few times I've actually tried to squeeze in there and get the screw and yada yada and it's super difficult and it never fits in the way I want. So this time I'm actually going to take the whole toilet out so I can spend the time rebuilding the way I need to. So what I'm going to do is down here in the front you have two pieces to the toilet. The toilet bowl is the upper part, then this bottom part is a base. There's no connection that goes through this. This is simply a, um, a a mounting point for the toilet. These little panels, excuse the big knife, pop out. My, my front one there has no bolt in it. The back one pops out and there's where I have a a lag bolt, uh, presumably there was some wood down below. So I'm actually going to take the whole thing out uh, because I think that will allow me to rebuild it easier. And when I remount, I might look at putting this over a little bit so I have the space I need. So there we go. Got suck set on there, made it a little bit easier, and they're coming right out. Okay, you see I got out this side. Now you can see the whole bowl can move. Again, remember on a marine toilet, this base is not like a regular toilet. There's nothing going through it. It's just a mount. Got this side out too. Now, um, if I wasn't doing a complete rebuild and I was willing to lay on my chest on top and work down there, I might be able to squeeze out my room by now just pivoting this. But I think my problem here way this sucker was wedged in here was because it was converted to an electric at one point in time. The hand pump ones usually are right about here and there's more room for the toilet on this side than there is the other side. So my guess is this was converted toilet. It was originally a hand pump and then they put the electric one in and they kept the mounts the same. But in reality we really need the toilet to be over just a little bit this way. It will allow me to service that motor in the future without having to do this. So I'm going to continue taking this last lag out right here, and then the whole thing will come free. Okay, last one is out. Toilet is totally free now, okay? You can move it back and forth, no problem. I can get to the back and work on the motor. Now, I've already taken this water line and turned it off at my through hole. Uh, through hole brings in the... the uh, regular river water which I'm the this head is probably just barely above the water line um, so the motor for the toilet the impeller actually brings the water in when it spins we'll cover that a little bit more a while back I converted the water line to a PEX line and only went to reinforced hose right at the toilet I did it for some other reasons, but um, really worked out nice. I'm happy with that. So next steps here. I'm going to disconnect the hoses. Water line. And in the back there, the drain. 
Okay, the sewer drain. Inside there, I don't know if you see it, it's hooked up wrong. And it's underneath those two clamps is your joker valve. And the discharge tube right now is clamped really tight onto that and probably affecting the joker valve. And my joker valve is bad, I know, I've already checked. And you can tell when your joker valve is bad because when you flush, you will actually get some of the sewage back into the bowl. That tells you that the joker valve is essentially leaking backwards. So I'll cover that. So I'm going to disconnect that there. And the white line that goes up to the bowl, that pops off really easily. You can just pull it. You can see the clamp there in the back. Let me zoom in. That little clamp right there. Let me see if I can get it. Right there. It just pulls right off. And then I'm going to unscrew the motor. Okay, looking down from the top, there's a motor attached to the base. And now I obviously have room. I can disconnect this quite easily, so that makes me happy. So here's my water line. I'm going to disconnect this hose clamp. And the white one over here just pulls right off. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, it's going to be hard without getting two hands. Let me pause. Okay, lines come off, just pulled off, very easy. Of course, you can undo that plastic thing, but I know from experience that you really don't need to. And at the top, it's not even secured. It's just slipped on. Next, I'm gonna come over to the water line, put my trusty multi-tool, you know, seven and one or whatever these are. They've hit hose clamps really well. And I'm gonna do that nice and loose and get it out of the way. Yep, you got some little water in there. Mine's turned off. Uh, remember, don't do that unless you know that your water's turned off. Especially if you're below the water line. <laughs> You'll get a little bit of a surprise. That happens, throw it back on. Go find your shutoff. All right, so you can see at this point in time that the motor, the macerator, okay? So this is the motor that when the toilet's turned on, it runs. It does two things. It grinds up the sewage, toilet paper, etc. And that happens in the front part. Then the middle part, it has an impeller that turns and brings in the water and shoots out water. Brings in water, shoots out water. So then it goes up to the bowl. That's how you get the water moving. So this motor does two things at once. Pretty cool. Chews up everything and brings in water. It's held on with these four screws here, here, and each corner. You pull those out with a flat, a minus a flathead, <clears throat> and then this is going to pull straight back. Okay, let's do that next. Okay, all the screws are out. Mine are flatheads because I'm an older boat. Here's my Phillips. Now, take it, pull it straight out. Okay, look at that. That's the bottom of your toilet. Yeah, you're going to get the stink. Okay, there's the motor. Again, impeller side. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, macerator side. And then the impeller for moving the water through. Bottom of the toilet, choker valve is right here. So this thing grinds things up and shoots it out this pipe. This pipe has a thing called a joker valve. It's no laughing matter. If you uh, have a joker valve go bad, what happens is the sewage goes down in this pipe, and then when there's pressure coming back, it'll come back. Joker valve is supposed to stop it from coming back. If it's leaking or not sealing properly, it'll come back in, and you'll end up seeing it get in your bowl. Uh, it's like you have to f flush longer to get clear fluid down. So now that I have everything disconnected, I will get to this, but I'm going to concentrate on this guy first. All right, motor is now out. Um, 
come up to the top here into my kitchen uh, I put down one of these handy flimsy cutting boards I like them for working on parts and stuff had to cut the wires loose um, I'll fix connectors on those later um, you know kind of probably the push together kind um, so let's go over the stats on this uh, bad boy model 37010 okay this is pretty standard for the Japsco uh, toilets I believe mine's a 12 volt DC 25 amp uh, fuse amps 16 uh, you get enough people using this over and over you start to really hit those house batteries um, especially if something gets wrong and gets stuck in there which originally led to my problem now I've already taken it apart uh, and I cleared it but in this front here is the macerator so that's where I pulled it out of I'll dive into that a little bit more uh, so what am I going to do today? What I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild it using this Jabsco kit. Okay, 37040. It has the various gaskets. Uh, we can see joker valve here, impeller, gaskets. Now, I took it apart the other day and cleared it. Um, and I probably didn't need to do that. This is one of those little tips. If you get a toilet paper, uh, sorry, you get a paper towel or some guest is put in there or you accidentally had it fall in, try using one of those things from Home Depot with barbs on it. Put it down your toilet and just very gently poke around in this area right here and try to pull it back out. You might get lucky and pull it right out of the toilet. Don't use a plunger though, okay? Marine toilets are not regular toilets. Regular toilets work on suction, okay? Uh, a, a negative, a suction is created by the pipe being high and water going over the edge. And when it goes over, it pulls the rest of it with it. This doesn't do that. If you use a plunger, you'll tear up the joker valve. Uh, and so it's not really that kind of thing you can do. You can try to get something down here and hook uh, if you have paper towel. My worry doing that, though, honestly, is that you might get some of it, but not all of it. And then you might have a problem with the rest of the system. So we want to kind of avoid that. The other thing I got is the kit for the discharge tube, 44107. I mentioned that mine was hooked up wrong, and thank you to other YouTubers on this one. You see this discharge tube is kind of weird. It's bent. It almost looks like it's not supposed to be that way. The hose isn't supposed to go further than this point. So the hose gets pushed on, stops here, clamp this area, not here. This is where the joker valve operates. If you clamp that and put it under pressure, the joker valve is not going to work properly. Okay. Um, previous owner of this boat did it, and so I did it too. I was wrong. All right, so back to the motor here. We take this front part off. This just comes off. Oh. Okay, top of the motor, or front of the motor, you can see the macerator. That's your blades that chop everything up. The edges are a little jagged, too, to help rip it up. Okay? Yeah, is this the part that has an actual sewage? It is. Um, I know I'm barehanded, no gloves on. I rinsed this thing already, um, and uh, hopefully it's clean enough. When you go back to assembly, though, you'll notice that you got this opening on the side okay what is that all about that's for when the sewage gets discharged you'll notice that when you put this back together this motor can only slide in with one way and that discharge has to be where the sewer discharge line lines up in other words if it was up here it's not going to slide in because the discharge hose will be over here so this has to be turned now how do you know you're lined up a little notch right here okay line that up it'll go in now important part here you can maybe see it moving around here if i can get it on this side look at that there's my problem upside down hanging over the toilet hot frustrated i missed that this gasket has slipped assembled the whole thing and i had a tremendous leak when i would turn on the toilet it would shoot out. So this is one gasket that's going to be replaced. You look and look, you can see it's pretty flat. 
it's kind of been ruined. So there you go. Now let's talk about the motor itself. Uh, yeah, you could go out and buy a new motor. Um, I'm always known to do that. You know, this one was I think 250 bucks. It's probably be a good price to replace it. You get a whole new toilet for 500. So you have to evaluate that for yourself. Older motors can sometimes take more power to run. That's a concern. You could do all this work and the damn thing breaks. That's always a concern too. Um, I tend to try to fix things. So, because I also want to know how they are. Good thing about this is, this is the same model that's existed for a long time. So if you're going to make mistakes, make mistakes on the one that's older. Then if you do get a newer one later, you'll know what you're doing. So, <clears throat> uh, the kit price, I, I can't even remember what the kit price, I think it was uh, 40 to $60, something like that for all these so um, that's really going to depend on where you get it at and that kind of stuff. The online people, Marine to you, Defender, they all they all have it. Uh, Amazon even has it. So there you go. Uh, so now I'm going to take the impeller off. All right. So you get yourself a socket set that fits the nut. Put it on there. The back of the motor, you'll see a notch shaft. Put a screwdriver in there. Then when you okay, so to get this macerator blade off, uh, you have to pull this nut off in order to get this housing off. So you're going to get a socket to go in there and go on the nut. Now, if you just start cranking on that, the whole thing will turn, and you won't be productive on getting the nut off. So on the back of the shaft, there's a notch in it. You can put a flathead in there. Now you could try holding a flathead out here and turning the socket, but of course it's a little bit too difficult. So if you wedge it in like I have it there, put your hand on the motor and then turn the socket set, you can easily break it loose. Unfortunately I'm a one man band here so I have to put down the phone to do it. So I'm going to pause. Um, but it breaks loose, it's not um, reverse threaded, it's a normal thread. So you turn it off and then be able to pull it out. Okay, so now the nut is loose. can come off and then the whole macerator blade will come out. A little hard one ha one handed, but you get the idea. Okay, so now it's off. This is the guy that actually does all the work. Chops everything up. Hmm, looks like mine's a little bent. Interesting. Um, looking inside, you can see the teeth. Okay, that it runs around in. So basically, this sucker's set up to shred everything. It shreds the poop, it shreds the whatever, and shoots it out. Um, so you can see you got hair and whatever in there. So I'm gonna clean that up and continue to work backwards into this pump okay so you can see uh, for me to get the rest off the shaft actually has a flat side to it and in there there's a set screw so I'm going to go to my um, my uh, hex and be able to pull that set screw off which then should pull this straight out I'm trying to give a good light uh, but I don't know that I'm being very helpful, but there you go. Okay, Allen wrench was the uh, word I was looking for. I found my Allen wrench set. Can never have too many of these. <laughs> I always seem to lose them. Um, so, yeah, we're going to pull this guy out. Yeah, try to do it one hand is always difficult. Um, but anyhow, we're going to pull this set screw out. Okay, I got it loose. Um, you see, I put the nut back on the shaft. Uh, one little trick I use is when I have the ability to put something that I take off back on for tracking purposes, I usually do that so I don't lose it. Otherwise, um, you might have seen in my other videos, I like to put everything into Ziploc bags, which I'll do in a minute. Um, so this is now loose. And this will slide off. So 
Okay, I think I'm stuck up right here. Pause again. All right, so that slides off. There you have it. Okay, pretty straightforward. And this is what we're now left with. Which you might recall in our pack, we have this seal. So at this point, we are going to take these apart so that we can get to the impeller on the inside. The impeller should be right behind this guy. So these four screws. Okay, I started loosening them up. Uh, you can see I got my Ziploc bag out. Highly recommend that. Put all your stuff in there. If you have to refer, refer back to photos and videos. Uh, interesting thing on this though, I had to point out four screws to come out. Phillips, top, bottom, sides. The sides are small. Top and bottom are long. Okay, important thing to remember. So, just remember the outlets and the inlet of the water take the short screws. The non-outlet sides take the long screws. Alright, so I'm going to continue taking that off. I did have some calcium and uh, deposits inside these screws, so it kind of made them difficult to get a Phillips in. But I just had to fit it in. I always make sure that you get the right size Phillips for the screw you're taking out, especially when you're doing DIY, because you don't know, uh, you don't want to strip something. That would be really bad. Okay. Screws are out, and now this whole plate here wiggles off. It's going to pull this straight out. Okay, plate's off. Take a look at it. Okay, let's remember orientation on this. Just trying to remember how it all go back together. Okay, and there we go. There's our impeller. Let's see if we can get a better look at it. There's our impeller. So we're bent over to the right. Just gotta remember that for putting it back in. Uh, it looks like we have some residue from a, a gasket here, so we probably have to clean that up. Um, I don't know if it came off the top or not. Remember, this is the outside, this is the other side. So yeah, we can see right there, the gasket has split, right? See what I'm talking about. There's the upper part and there's the bottom part. So I'm gonna have to take that and clean that very carefully off so that the new gasket seals it up. The impeller looks pretty straightforward, just like the one on the motor. And uh, we'll be pulling that off and replacing it. And we'll go through our kit and see all the different pieces we need to put back in. Okay, so the rest of this pulls off. So I'm pulling the whole housing and the impeller off. There, got it. Okay, so here you have what basically boils down to very standard motor with a long shaft. This housing, the impeller, moves the fresh water. The other end is the macerator. So one motor doing two functions. So I'm going to pull the impeller out, clean the surface up, and then we'll start reassembly. Okay, so a little bit more detail as we pull it apart. This is the out-facing side, and this was the internal side to the motor. You look in there there is a lock screw in there or a lock washer it appears on the back of the impeller so I will take all this apart and record it okay I pull the impeller out I'm just gonna stick a screwdriver in there I'm trying to do this one-handed and pull there we go okay also, I was able to just peel off most of that gasket. 
Alright, here's our impeller. Let's take a look at it. I'm not looking too bad of shape. See, it's got a flat side on it for the shaft. You know, it looks like a regular thing. You know, it's not under heat. Ah, you know what? That's a little easy give right there. I kind of can feel that. That one's a little bit harder. Um, so, you know, sometimes these things get too easy and they collapse and don't move as much water. But it definitely doesn't get as bad as the one in the motors, obviously. But there you go. So we got a new one of that, too. All right, so at this point... Um, I think we have everything taken apart as much as possible, although I'm not sure about the center seal. So, if you think about it, this was like this on the motor. This is nice clean water that actually comes in, well, what river water or fresh water or whatever water you use. Some people use water out of this, whatever they're motoring on. Some people use fresh, clean water. Um, so that seal has to seal up in there. Um, I suspect this is part of the kit, so I need to open up the kit to find out, so I'll probably have to go pop this off, but we'll leave that there. So we have that, we have all the parts that we are going to reuse, and we have the parts that we suspect are bad. So let's go through our kit here. All right, first piece we have here, this looks similar, we've seen that guy before, right? So that's good. Um, look at both sides of it looks a little bit different so we'll check that out um, our impeller there's our impeller okay new one old one sizes look uh, right so we got the right size for that okay that's good um, let's see we've got seals this is the seal that ripped okay so that's good like that this is the gasket um, I actually put the old one in the bag that went bad in the very beginning and caused all my problems so that's good okay right here oh that looks familiar we'll come back to that right here's your joker valve okay I still haven't taken the hose off the um, the base yet but this is a joker valve so sewage comes out of the macerator is pushed this way this thing opens up kind of like a duck bill right in fact that's what these used to be called right and it will pop out here but then this thing reseals so if pressure comes from this side the thing seals up and stops anything going back uh, my old one is split right down here so we have that all right let's take a little bit more look what we have here okay these look suspiciously like the center of this right there okay so they're giving me stuff to replace that so I am not done with my disassembly I need to get that out yet all right what else do we have here okay we have some uh, impeller lubricant good Putting the impeller in makes it nice. Um, I believe this is for between the toilet bowl. We might not need this. Uh, it's either that or it'll be the base onto the boat. And then it comes with some instructions, which I'm going to read now, make sure I'm not missing anything. So there you go. So those are all our parts that we're replacing. Um, seal keeps the water where the water should be. This seal is going to keep the sewer where the sewage should be. Ah, this seal. Don't know where this goes. So i got to figure that one out. Um, I think it might be here. But I'll check. And then we'll do this one when we reassemble. So there's your kit laid out. Um, so now I'm going to go a step further and try to get this out.
I need two hands. <laughs> okay, just put a screwdriver into the hole and very gently turn sideways and the rubber seal pops up. And then this is what it looks like. Done. I don't think the metal stuff comes out. Okay, and then the kit. Okay, so you put the seal in flat, push it in very gently, all around evenly. Then you lay the uh, pinwheel washer thing on top of it, push it down, and the little tiny legs uh, clip into the ridge. Just go around each one, check them very carefully that they've, they're gripped. Um, I give it a good wiggle around and push from the other side. And it is in there. So now I'm going to put this uh, back onto the motor and start working backwards. Okay, new seal is on, clipped in, and the uh, impeller portion of the pump is put back on. Now I'm going to grease up the impeller and slide it back on, and it's going to be bent to the right. I referred back to my video to recall that. Um, the, the oil they give you, you lube it up, put it in there, um, and bend it right as you twist it on. Can't really show you doing it, but basically you're going to lube it up, uh, you twist it on and then turn the shaft to the left so it flat slides in. Okay, lubed it up good. Um, I put lube all the way around inside and then I also put lube all over the thing. Um, the impeller has a flat spot on it for the shaft so there's only one way to put it on. You put it on the shaft, slide it down, and then you manipulate the fins um, for the the right direction. Oh, I might have one that's not quite right. I might have to fix that. Um, but pretty straightforward, just a little bit greasy. Okay, next I threw on the gasket. Okay, it goes on. I am trying to keep track of um, the orientation. So, to mental note, the label matches the label on that side. Oh, why is that important? It's important because, remember, the holes on the side are for the short uh, screws and up and top, top and bottom are for the long ones. Okay, so that's there. Next, this plate's going to go on. Now, this is all covered in the instructions at this point, so as you're assembling, you can look if you're worried about the order. That's what we're going through. Okay, the new plate is on. Um, that little seal right there is, has a shaft notch on it. Okay, so you know it's the right one. Um, uh, but here's the deal. That is made super tight. Because as far as I can tell, since it's notched, this thing actually spins with the shaft. Okay, so it's not really... It must be sealing, but I don't know that it seals completely. Um, so that was a little bit of a bitch to get on there. Um, I used a little bit of the lubricant to help lube up the seal. And then what I did is I got the flat side on first. And then kind of hooked around the rust and had to push it on. So it is a tight fit. Definitely want to realize that so you don't think you got the wrong stuff. I think it's correct. Um, now... One thing I noticed on alignment, which is very interesting, remember I said the paper lines up with the longer bolts, longer screws. Well, actually, once I look a little bit closer, I realize the heads are different sizes. The long heads are bigger than the short heads. So if you look, that tells you. And I look back at the old one, and I thought, yeah, it's the same there, too. So um, that's another thing that helps line you up. You just look at the head size which is going to be our next step so we're going to put the screws in long and short um, this is going to be where that seal goes i believe and uh, then we'll work back to um, the this plate and then that and the impeller okay so you can see i got the screws back in um, these little guys they simply hold 
this part together. The long ones go actually all the way through and tie into the motor. So they're a little bit more difficult to align up. So what I did is I used this little viewing port to rotate until I found the hole and then put the screw in. You can see mine's old so there's some rust points. Um, that kind of shows you where it probably lined up because that's probably its lowest point. Anyhow, use that window, find the hole, then put the long screw through. So I put them in. I haven't tightened them up all the way. Of course, you want to tighten up equally. Um, but the top and bottom go to the motor. The other two don't. Okay, um, I put the seal on. I used a little bit of the lube to help hold it in. Uh, if you put it on and you put it in there, it'll kind of stick. Now remember, we got that seal that's going to spin. So the big question is, how far do we push this thing back before we lock it down? So one of the tricks I like to use is I look at where it used to be set, and then I line up the screw about the same way. So if you look right there, you can see the old point. Sorry, I've got to get a focus right in the middle. Where? Let me see if I can point to it. Right there. That's where the old set screw uh, from the Allen wrench hit. So I'm going to line that up with that. And as it turns out, if I line it up, it's not really pushing hard on that seal. So the whole thing is off a little bit, which makes sense. Um, they're going to spin together, but probably don't need to squish it. The thing needs to be able to move or whatever. So got that on there. I'm going to use my Allen wrench, lock that down, and, th and that'll be the next step. Okay, so next step that's on and locked in my next step is that this guy's going to go over remember it's going to be approximately there that notch is going to be on top the window is going to be side then we're going to put the impeller blade back on and then the nut locked down the back now my impeller blade is bent um, so this is a little bit of a dilemma when you're working with uh, rebuilding stuff i do not see it bent on the diagram diagram looks straight I would have thought they would have represented that correctly so I'm going to take a chance on this and I'm going to bend this sucker back straight so what do I mean by that see how it's bent up on the right I'm going to flatten that out the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to guess that somebody got something stuck in there and bent it um, because as this thing macerates I'm not sure that it, it's being used to force the direction. Uh, I, I think what happened was that the water is going to build up pressure. It's going to chew up stuff and then it's going to go out the port on the side. So in other words, I don't think the, mara the macerator blade is directional. So I do believe it's supposed to be flat. This is totally a guess. I could be wrong. It could be intended to be bent like that. Um, so I'll do it, see if there's a problem. Uh, might have check online to see if the part comes new, bent or not. I don't think it is, so that's what I'm going to go with. Sometimes you got to take a chance. Okay, got it bent back. The shroud is on there. Um, I'm just realizing now I might clean that up a little bit. This, this seems like there's some gunk in there. But, um... It's back. I straightened it out. I put it in. There's only one way the blade can go on because of the notch. Now the nut, on the other hand, uh, has two sides to it, of course. This side and the other side. Flat versus notched. I went back and show, checked the video. So at this point, everything is reassembled. Um... I kept referring to the macerator blade as the impeller. Of course, that was a mistake. Um, the impeller is back here in the water. This is the macerator blade. But I think you guys know what I meant. Um, so anyways, this is done. So this can be put aside. I have to fix the wires up before I do it. But I went ahead and pulled the toilet. Okay, got the rest of it off. Uh, if you recall, what do I mean by that? I just mean I had to undo the sewer outlet here which is my hose that goes to my marine sanitized device sanitary device so that's that guy there um and oh, oh, geez. oh 
if we turn around back, we can see that this is where the motor is going to go in. I did find that I have a crack right here. I'm a little worried about that. I'll have to check that. So I'm going to be taking this off. Um, but to make life easier, I went ahead and took the nuts off um, on the toilet bowl. And I'm going to take the toilet bowl off because that extra um, gasket that's in the kit, this guy, goes in there. And I figure, what the heck, while I have it off, it'd be easier. Now, the other reason is I'm going to change the location of this mounting. And I think it'll be a heck of a lot easier to do with the toilet bowl off. So I'll mount this thing up, then I'll put the bowl back on. So just trying to think ahead about working in a tight space, always a concern on a boat. All right, got the bowl off. Um, these studs here, you can see some of them move. And as I went to take off some of the nuts, they, the whole stud started to unscrew. I didn't really know what I was going to find, so I was a little worried about that. Um, so a little trick is keep pressure on the stud and then undo the nut, and you'll not unscrew the nut. But you can see now how this is linked in there. they got a nut on the bottom, and you set the height. And then here's our gasket. Oh, nothing's there. So let's hope it's on the bottom of this. Yes, it is. It's right there. So good. We'll be replacing that. And um, But for now, basically, I'll be working on this. So I'm going to pull this off, get to the joker valve next, and um, then we'll start to reassemble. Also did notice that is a crack right above that screw. So it looks like a manufacturer uh, mold line, but uh, it cracked. So it's been over tightened in the past. Remember, you're dealing with plastic. Only so tight. If you go too far, you crack it. And nothing worse than cracking. So, better to take it easy and see if it leaks and then slightly tighten it up than it is to crack it. Alright. Save my screw. So, at this point, we have these two gaskets and the joker valve left. Alright, so now we pull this off. And you'll see there's your joker valve okay so you pull that out not easy with one hand but let's see if i can get it hold on okay so see how it's all misshapen see how it's got an opening in it all the time so when that sewage backs up in the line after being pressurized before the uh, MSD takes it, it can come back through here. Now the other thing too, I know from having looked at this before, it's got splits in it. See that hole there? And then there's another hole. Um, on the valves. And that partly is Probably from clamping up high. So don't clamp up high, remember. You clamp it down below. All right, so that's going to be replaced. And then this guy is actually bad, too. So I bought that in the package. So these two are trash. And there we go. So now I'm kind of down to the basics. I'm not sure if these come out or not. But I'm going to clean this up. Um, and uh, then we'll start reassembly and put the motor on. I think this white gasket goes up here and the other one. Um, I'm not positive on that, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't fit anywhere else. And there we go. We'll be putting this back together and having a bathroom again today. Okay, base is all cleaned up and uh, I'm about to do the joker valve. So I got my new joker valve from my kit. Look how good it looks. I guess there is a little bit of a gap there, but when it's pressurized, probably close it, yeah. Compared to the old one, which is really distorted. So this is the new one from the kit. Uh, not Sorry, not from the kit, the separate order that I mentioned earlier. And um, 
we're going to go ahead and take the joker valve and it slides in right inside here like so okay now look at that rise you got a good gasket seal all the way around so keep that in mind when you're tightening those screws so that you don't actually crack this thing at its manufacturer join um, it's plastic and the screws are for plastic so this is definitely something that doesn't have to be uh, cranked on a ton all right there it is on um, I changed the orientation a little bit before this kind of went forward so it seems like there's two ways this can go on where this points forward a little bit or where it points in this direction but you can't seem to get a configuration where it points backwards which would have been helpful in my case all right, so that's done. Now I'm going to mount uh, the macerator. So the thing to check out here and be careful about is remember, we got a nice new seal right there. That guy has to be perfectly in place the whole way around. Now I used some of the lube that came with the kit to hold the gasket in place. I'm going to put a little bit more on that just to hold it in place while I put it up and then tighten the four screws. So let's see if I can get a good layout. There you see the seal set little bead going around. If that is not in that channel or moves out of channel when you go to tighten, you will have a leak. In fact, you'll have shooting water will come shooting out of that. Um, it'll be clean, but <laughs> but it will be a mess. So don't do that. That's the main thing to watch. I think of putting in, and of course, that the notch is at the top. The notch here has to fit with that notch there uh, that notch there up at the top there motors mounted back on uh, make sure that when you go to do it that you actually are getting a tight seal right here if you don't have it fitted in all the way sometimes it'll leave a little bit of a gap and then do them evenly to the point where it's hand tight don't go nuts on it um, and that's about it. I've already put the base back and did a test run and checked and marked my new orientation. And I'm going to take this down now and kind of do a dry fit. And once I feel that I have that and the screw holes proper, then I'm going to put the toilet bowl back on and then take it down and hook everything up. Oh, I have to do the electrical. So I'm going to put some connectors on that first. Okay, connector number one on. And then uh, putting the second one on, and going to use my heat gun to uh, shrink it. Now, why do I use blades like that um, on the motor? Because if I take the motor off, these are no longer powered. But if I take the motor off while it's live, the other side sticking out of the wall would still be live. So I don't want the blades on that side because they touch, they'll short out. Um, so it's a safety thing. So you got to keep in mind which ones you put on what side. So this will allow me to disconnect the motor easily uh, if I have to and not have to cut the wires again. The connections are really good. They're pretty strong. I'm not too worried. Um, you know, if this was a critical wire, I probably would join them directly together. But uh, it's not. So this allows me to disconnect, uh, which is very handy, especially if you're anchored out or something like that. So there we go. All right, toilet's back on the base. Um, put the new seal in between there. Um, now these have um, a plastic washer, then a metal washer. Um, when I found it, there was another washer on there. It's not really needed, so I took it off. Um, if you start to put these on and they start to spin, don't forget you can tilt your toilet on the side and go underneath with a Phillips and go to the back side of that if you have the whole thing out one of the benefits of doing this while it's out um so these okay you you, you got plastic going to ceramic careful on tightening basically the hand tight and then a the quarter turn that's all i would do um otherwise the previous people have already cracked this there and there plastic can go and still hang in there but if you crack the ceramic you gotta buy a new one
and you don't want to do that. Uh, so there you go. Now um, it's installation time. Okay, all install, all reinstalled, and did run into problems. Pretty much every possible problem, uh, which I'll go over. So it's all hooked up and it's working again. Again, we'll show you in a second. But one thing was bef uh, when this got tightened up. When you put it back on, put a screwdriver on this and try to turn it. If you can't turn it, then you have some of your spacing inside the motor off. So if you recall, there is kind of a wheel, um, like a flywheel that's behind the plastic behind the macerator blade. And I had to use a set screw to set the depth on that on the shaft. You need that pushed further back. Um, I had put mine too high up and so once everything was tightened the plastic was hitting and then also my discharge tube uh, was very difficult to clamp up what I ended up doing was putting the hose higher up but then clamping back and so that worked so now um, I've also moved the toilet over a bit so now it's more center of my thing you can hear now when it flushes <laughs> strong flush good clean liquid see how nothing in it uh, so that's the way it's supposed to work I'm very happy told the time I would say about a day day and a half um, it went overnight so it's hard to say the exact time there you go hope you uh, enjoyed the video if I hope you found it helpful um, like and subscribe would be helpful and I'll continue posting these thank you